Okay. Um, hi, I'm Ryo Suzuki, a PhD student at the University of Colorado Boulder, Department of Computer Science. In this talk, I'd like to talk about DynaBlock dynamic 3D printing for uh, instant and reconstructable shape formation. This work is done by the collaboration with Junichi Yamaoka, Daniel Leitinger, the Tom Ye, Mark Gross, uh, Yoshihiro Kawahara, and Yasuaki Kakehi. So uh, this work was my internship project at the University of Tokyo, which was started from the following speculation. Um, what if the 3D printer could print the physical objects in seconds? And what if the object could be disassembled and reconstructed as a new object like clay? We speculated with these capabilities, the 3D printer could be an interactive medium rather than just a fabrication device where the people can interactively and physically design, explore, and communicate through dynamic physical objects. So to explore some of these possibilities, we present DynaBlock, an instant and reconstructable shape formation system by assembling the digital block materials. The DynaBlock combines the capability of the 3D printer and the shape displays which assemble the 3,000 of small block material to create graspable 3D shapes. Each block has a 9 millimeter in its size and can connect each other with magnetic connection. To instantly create 3D shapes, it leverages the shape display as a parallel block assembly. By combining the horizontal and the vertical connection and the disconnection mechanism, it can create an arbitrary 3D shapes even with an overhanging structure. The rendered shape can be also disassembled and reconstructed as a new object. So uh, this paper describes the design and the imp implementation of such system and explore some of the application scenarios enabled by dynamic 3D printing. So, okay, this was a quick summary of our work. And uh, in the remainder of the talk, I'd like to talk about related work, design, system and imp implementation, and finally, uh, limitation and the future work. Okay, now I'd like to talk about the related work. Our work was originally driven by Ivor Sutherland's ultimate display in which he envisioned the computer that can control existence of matter. Or more recently, Hiroshi issues radical, uh, radical atoms in which he envisioned the transformable materials for human computer interaction. To make this vision reality, recent research in HCI made a significant advances through various approaches. The first approach to make the dynamic physical objects is a shape display. The shape display can dynamically render an arbitrary 2.5D shapes which the user can actually touch and appear as a tangible object. However, the existing shape display can only render the 2.5D shapes, and these generated shapes cannot be grasped or used as a physical object, as the pins are attached to the tabletop surfaces. <clears throat> to overcome this limitation, the recent work explores using a shape display to assemble the 3D shapes. For example, the kinetic blocks uh, investigates a constructive assembly by uh, actuating a passive object with an inform system. However, it still has a limitation in the size of the blocks, which currently needs to be four times bigger than the size of the each pin. Thus, it is difficult to achieve the final resolution with smaller blocks. Alternatively, the self-configurable modular robots like Mbrox or Zoeys use many, uh, many movable robots to construct the physical 3D shapes. However, this approach introduces a scalability problem as each module uh, requires individual actuation, sensing, power, and communication mechanism. In contracts, uh, the method called digital 3D printing, the first introduced by Neil Gerstenfeld, has explored alternative approach to, constructive 3D, uh, to constructing 3D shapes by assembling digital materials like Lego blocks. So this system typically uses an external assembler or robotic arm to construct 3D shapes. While this approach has a great potential for the reconstructability, however, the printing time of current systems are still pretty slow, like taking a couple of hours 
to complete 10 to 20 layers. So to overcome this limitation, we introduced dynamic 3D printing, an alternative approach for instant and reconstructable shape formation. The dynamic 3D printing aims to achieve the following four properties, instant, reconstructable, arbitrary, and the graspable shape formation. Like shape display, it can instantly and dynamically render the physical objects. Um, like digital materials or constructive assembly, the material can be reconstructable. Also, like existing 3D printer, it can also create uh, arbitrary and graspable shape uh, in 3D, 3 dimensional. So we define the dynamic 3D printing as a class of a system that have all of these uh, properties. To achieve this goal, dynamic 3D printing has two key design components. The first one is a switchable connector, and the second one is a parallel assembler. The switchable connector is the key to enable the reconstructable shape formation. Uh, there are several connection mechanisms which have proposed in the prior work. For example, the mechanical latching, permanent or electromagnetic connection, electrostatic, electropermanent magnets, thermal bonding, photochromic bonding, and dry adhesion. After having explored some of these connection mechanisms, we decided to further explore the permanent magnet uh, for simple and low-cost fabrication <coughs> for a uh, connection and a disconnection mechanism. The second key component is parallel assembler. This is the key to enable the instant shape formation. Because, for example, the traditional 3D printer, like FDM, uses a linear printing method, which can only construct one point at a time. However, when assembling one layer of n by n size objects, linear assembly method would take all n square time, as each layer requires n by n individual blocks. Alternatively, we explore a parallel assembly method that can create an entire layer at once. In that case, it only takes all one time to create one layer, which can significantly reduce the printing time. By combining these key design components, we propose this design architecture for instant and reconstructable shape formation system. To demonstrate the idea, we developed, we developed the DynaBlock, a proof of concept prototype for dynamic 3D printing. The DynaBlock forms three dimensional shape in second by assembling the 3,000 of small blocks. For the parallel assembler, we use a 24 by 16 of pinch based shape display, uh, which can push the blocks up to create three dimensional shapes. The key challenges of a DynaBlock system is how to achieve the connection and the disconnection mechanism with a permanent magnet. So I'd like to first explain about how to achieve the horizontal connection and the disconnection. For horizontal connection, each block can uh, connect through omnidirectional uh, magnetic connection. Each block has a hole in which the uh, spherical magnet is embedded, and the spherical magnet can rotate freely so that it can automatically align its polarity to connect with nearby blocks. So this connection mechanism is strong enough to hold eight blocks in horizontal direction uh, without collapsing. So to, to prevent the blocks uh, from connecting in the initial state, we use a spacer between blocks to separate nearby blocks. So each horizontal phase has a fit with 0.5 millimeter, which receives a one millimeter thickness of the spacer to separate blocks. Once the blocks uh, are pushed up, then the spacer is removed and each block can connect horizontally. For vertical connection, we use a disk magnet attached to, attached to the bo both the top and the bottom of the, of the blocks. By default, the blocks can connect in the vertical direction with the attached disk magnets. However, when pushed, the connection can be detached as the magnetic connection in the horizontal direction, uh, uh, the magnetic connection in the vertical direction is weaker than uh, horizontal ones. 
So if we push only one block, then the vertical connected block can be detached while maintain, maintaining the horizontal connection with stronger magnetic force, which allows the uh, overhanging structure. By combining these horizontal and vertical connection and the disconnection mechanism, we can quickly assemble and disassemble three-dimensional shapes in seconds. So we built an interactive boxer editor and a simulator which allows the interactive design of the objects. The user can import a three-dimensional 3D design as an STL file, which can be converted to boxers at an appropriate resolution. The user can also interactively edit the shape of imported object or create a shape uh, from scratch. Overall, combining these uh, software and hardware, we demonstrated the some of the proof of concept prototype for dynamic 3D printing. Okay, uh, now I'd like to talk about the limitations and the future work. Since the current system, current Im implementation is just a proof of concept prototype, so there are a number of limitations that needs to be addressed in the future work. The first, the current implementation is an open loop system in both pin positioning and error handling. So it needs to in integrate a limit switch or rotary encoder to more accurately track the pin position or for reli more reliably work. The second, since it's, use, it's using a magne magnetic connection, uh, there is a stability issue of printed object if we want to use it as a rigid part. So uh, we think our tool could be more appropriate for designing and the prototyping of the iteration phase. The finally, to disassemble the object, the user needs to manually push the blocks down to the table. In the future, uh, this could be autom automated using a sim single plate that can automatically clear the objects. We acknowledge the current prototype and, uh, and the resolution is far from the, uh, the 3D, current 3D printing resolution. However, we envision that this would open up a new possibility for making a 3D printer as an interactive environment. For example, the 3D printer could become a physical environment where a designer can interactively explore a physical design, like shown in a, a Claytronics video. Or an architect can communicate with the client through interactively changing the miniature model, or children could dynamically form an education manipulative to learn science and engineering. So there is a, a broad, you know, the, uh, uh, the possibility here as a 3D printer, as an interactive medium, but to do so, the, uh, the speed and the interactivity of the 3D printer is the key. So um, we hope uh, this work can initiate that, that kind of research. Also, uh, maybe the user can uh, directly design in the physical space um, instead of a computer screen and can easily transform the design to digital data. So, uh, this kind of the work, uh, uh, this kind of the, you know, the uh, speculation could enhance the how to design, um, the uh, design, explore, and communicate uh, through the physical objects in the uh, interactive physical environment. So we hope this paper could open up this possibility and uh, initiate the conversation toward this future vision. Um, so thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, we have two microphones one in the middle here and one on the side. How are you? Dan Ashbrook, University of Copenhagen. This is, uh, this is really cool and really inspirational. Um, I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on, in this final designing in the physical world scenario, how would you capture the design? Would you be able to put it back on the table and have it disassemble it and understand how it was put together in the beginning? Right, yeah, it's, it's definitely future work because uh, we only have a kind of a, a fabrication process and it doesn't track any kind of you know, the form like you know, the uh, kind of 3D scanner. So it's definitely future work and we probably think like embedding a sensor in a spacer or Potentially, the embedding sensor in each block to kind of track the physical material, which 
could open up the kind of you know, the uh, futuristic scenario for the designing in direct kind of interactive publication. Thanks. Hi, uh, Subramanian, uh, Purdue University. Uh, thank you for sharing your work. It's, it's, it was really good. Uh, I had a question on uh, the stability. You briefly mentioned uh, the limitation about stability, but uh, could you talk a little bit more on uh, what would happen if there is a void within the within the structure, and um, like uh, how would a, uh, how would your system handle um, you know a, a void present within a 3D structure? And uh, yeah. So uh, the talking about the stability, yeah, we acknowledge this is not the kind of appropriate for kind of rigid parts. But uh, one kind of interesting direction is. While you while still using a kind of a magnetic magnetic connection for the kind of instant uh, shape formation, but making some kind of uh, the water solvable glue to make the final final product to make it rigid, like the uh, kind of you know the uh, this is a kind of uh, different process of the um, the using the magnetic connection for the design iteration. While kind of if you finish the designing, then the uh, you know, the, the user can uh, the solid the object. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so let's thank our speaker.